who's ready for an art history lecture? Yeah. <laughs> um, tonight, I'm going to do a, a, a very quick talk, um, just giving you some context about Carol Walker, talking a little bit about the exhibition, thinking through some of the themes in her work. The image that you're looking at right here is Carol Walker in the Drawing Center. Um, Carol Walker was born in Stockton, California, and when she was 13, she moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Her father, Larry Walker, who is an esteemed artist in his own right, moved the family there because he was uh, took a job as the head of Georgia State University's art department. And uh, taking that job meant that Carol Walker moved to Georgia, and it really uh, was an entirely different experience for her than being in Stockton, California. And she lived under the shadow of Stone Mountain, which is a Confederate monument, which you'll see echoes in a lot of her work and is also in the um, book that you'll see in the vitrines outside. Um, and being in Georgia uh, was sort of the first time that she talks about that she really encountered um, this disparity and racism. Um, she then goes to uh, Rhode Island School of Design to study art. And after that, she's going around New York and she's showing different curators and galleries her these small silhouettes that she's doing at this time. And she meets with Ann Temkin, who is um, the curator at the Drawing Center. And Ann Temkin suggests, why don't you make these larger? Um, so what she does is she takes these big pieces of paper and she draws and she cuts them out and she applies them to the wall. The silhouettes depict trauma, violence. They show themes dealing with the antebellum self, history and how we choose to remember it. It's a fabulous, abject horror show. These works are often hard to look at because America is hard to look at. I'm loving this audience. <laughs> Hill and Owls wrote, things are not what they seem because America is literally incredible, fantastic. A freak show that is almost impossible to watch, let alone to understand. In Walker's work, slavery is a nightmare from which no American has yet awakened. Bondage, ownership, the selling of bodies for power and cash have made twisted figures of blacks and whites alike, leaving us all scarred, hateful, hated and diminished. The final image is gone and historical romance of a civil war as it occurred between the dusky thighs of one young negress and her heart. You can see this relationship to thinking through maybe um, of Gone with the Wind or the sort of pastoral Georgia landscape. Um, we also can start to think about how is a silhouette act as a form of representation? It's a slippery thing. Lisa Saltzman, the art historian, refers to them as negative images of, of negative images. So not only is the silhouette negative, but also the content is negative. Kara Walker says, it's there, but it's not there. So in many ways, it becomes a kind of a hallucination. Maybe it's a shadow a spectral presence, it's a ghost that haunts us all. It's also an exaggeration. Her work is a dirty joke, it's impolite. It plays with stereotypes in order to upend those stereotypes. In the, um, the wall text, you'll see that we reference Goya and Daumier, so there's this sort of history, of course, of um, maybe parody, of illustration, um, of artists who look at our contemporary moment either make fun of it or try and represent it in a way in which we can better understand it. Um, because of her work and because of the slipperiness of it, uh, there's also been a lot of controversy around Carol Walker's work, as I'm sure you know. Um, many have argued that she makes arts for white audiences. Um, Betty Saar, an incredible African-American artist of a little bit of a la later generation, um, was very upset when Carol Walker won the MacArthur Genius Award. Um, the MacArthur Genius Award is like the award that everyone dreams that they're going to wake up one day and get the phone call that they got. Um, it is the highest award. It's $800,000 over five years. And Carol Walker got it when she was 27, which is very, very young. Um, and I think many women, many people who had worked for so long and hadn't gotten the recognition had some difficulty with this. And Betty Starr wrote a letter to the MacArthur Board arguing um, in protest against this award for Carol Walker. Um, many women, African-American women, signed the letter, including Howardina Pindell. And I think we can attribute this to generational difference, differences, ways of um, maybe representing race. Um, there is no victors in Carol Walker's work. Um, 
as Krista mentioned, everyone is implicated. There isn't a kind of moral to these works. There's an ambiguity instead. Everyone is culpable. And a lot of times um, when looking at her work, people argue or think through like whether she's exercising like the racist imagination, or is she exorcising, i.e. getting rid of the racist imagination? And that play between that is what makes her work, again, slippery, makes it ambiguous, makes it difficult. And for me, it also really kind of talks to um, the contradictions and the difficulty of America. Henry Louis Gates Jr. wrote, no one can mistake the images of Kara Walker as realistic images. Only the visually illiterate could mistake their postmodern critiques for realistic portrayals. And that is the difference between the racist original and the postmodern signifying anti-racist parody that characterized the genre of artistic expression. And yet, I still understand Betty Sarr's position. I still understand this other position that might say, maybe there needs to be victors in this kind of work. Maybe there needs to be um, some kind of relief. I don't think that there's relief in this work. So I had known about her silhouettes and admired them, but I really don't think I came to a kind of reckoning with Kara Walker's work until this was an exhibition at um, her gallery, Sycamore Jenkins. It was, you know, this moment. Well, let me tell you, read the title to you first. Um, Sycamore Jenkins & Co. is compelled to present the most astounding and important painting show of the fall art show viewing season. Collectors of fine art will flock to see the latest Carol Walker offerings, and what is she offering but the finest selection of artworks by an African-American living woman artist this side of the Mississippi. Modest collectors will find her prices reasonable. Those of a hardier disposition will recognize bargains. Scholars will study and debate the historical value and intellectual merits of Miss Walker's divisionary tactics. Art historians will wonder whether the work represents a departure or a continuum. Students of color will eye her work suspiciously and exercise their free right to culturally annihilate her on social media. <laughs> Parents will cover the eyes of innocent children. School teachers will re-examine their art history curricula. Prestigious academic societies will withdraw their support. Former husbands and former lovers will recoil in abject terror. Critics will shake their heads in bemused silence. Gallery directors will wring their hands at the sight of throngs of the gallery curious flooding the pavement outside. The final president of the United States will visibly wince. Empires will fall, although which ones only time will tell. So that was the title of the exhibition. <laughs> Which I think is brilliant because it, uh, it it has this irony to it, but it also kind of you know takes any sort of power out of any criticism that might happen to it, anyways, because it's all placed there within the title. And when I saw the exhibition, it was um, on the last day of the show, and in fact, there were throngs of people outside. And I'll say that it was also a, a largely African American community that was in that space. And it made me think again about this idea that people argue that it was um, work for white people, because in fact, I felt in that moment that it wasn't for me, and that in many ways I was maybe intruding in this moment. But also what it made me really think about is, uh, and I think this is a really important, important um, part of Kara Walker's work, is the community of viewership, what it's like to be in the room with other people looking at her work, that it is not just a kind of individual moment, me and the work of art, but it's everybody around me looking at that work. And that's just to say that, you know, when we're looking at this work, we're also implicated in it. And that implication can change us. And that implication can change us in relationship to the neighbor uh, that's also viewing the work. Um, so if we think about something like the Society of Spectacle, which is the closest I'll get to any kind of theory in this talk, if we're thinking about Guy Debord, he argues that the Society of Spectacle is not a collection of images, but instead it's the social relations among people, which is mediated by images. Um, Maurice Berger wrote of Carol Walker's work, the work demands much from the viewer. viewer titillating, discomforting, horrifying, or humoring, or reifying racial trauma, the works insist that we engage with them exposed and vulnerable in the crowded presence of others. For me, that crowded presence that day really, I felt it and I also felt that vulnerability. This was right after the Unite the Right rally in 2017, which was the um, white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, and I think that also seeing this at the moment uh, was really, really very powerful. And I know that the curator 
kept bugging Kara Walker for a statement. And and she wouldn't send one in and she wouldn't send one in. And they were like, we need a statement so that we can write a press release. Like, we have to put some information in. And so I'm going to read you her statement now. And that statement they decided to just give exactly as the, um, as the, um, as a press release. I don't really feel the need to write a statement about a painting show. I know what you all expect from me, and I've complied up to a point, but frankly, I'm tired. Tired of standing up, being counted, tired of having a voice, or worse, being a role model. Tired, true, of being a featured member of my racial group and or my gender niche. It's too much. And I write this knowing full well that my right, my capacity to live in this godforsaken country as a proudly raced and urgently gendered person is under threat by random groups of white male supremacist goons who flaunt a kind of patched together notion of race purity with flags and torches and impressive displays of perpetrators as victim sociopathy. I roll my eyes, fold my arms and wait. How many ways can a person say racism is the real bread and butter of our American mythology? And in how many ways will the racists among our countrymen act out their Turner Diaries race war fantasy combination Nazi Germany and Annabellum South? States which, incidentally, lost the wars they started and always will, precisely because there's no way those white racisms can survive the earth without the rest of us types upholding humanity's best, keeping the motor running on civilization, being good and preserving nature and all the stuff worth working and living for. Anyway, this is a show of works on paper and on linen, drawn and collaged using ink, blade, glue, and oil stick. These works were created over the course of the summer of 2017, not including the title, which was crafted in May. It's not exhaustive, ex activist, or comprehensive in any way. So this was an exhibition that was on my mind for many years, and um, I opened up a space in Athens, Georgia. I worked at the university, and I decided that we needed a downtown gallery space, so I opened up a 5,000 square foot space, and I worked with donors, and I built it out, and I did the branding, and I worked with designers, and did the whole thing, and then I was really tired. And I planned out the first year, and I was like, I remember thinking, I don't think I like art anymore. Like, I don't... <laughs> Like, what am I doing? Like, I need to, maybe, I've always wanted to be a casting director. I was like, maybe, which is kind of like being a curator. And so I then I thought, the next thought I had was like, well, what if I, um, I was like, well, what if I, what if I could sh do any exhibition in the world? What would it be? And the first thought was Kara Walker. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote to the gallery. They said, yeah, maybe she'll do it. Like, write a proposal. I said, okay. So I put a proposal together. I knew that I wanted to show her drawings. And of course, she's been making drawings her entire career. The show that I saw at Sikkim and Jenkins was not necessarily like a whole new break in her oeuvre. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so we decided to do this exhibition of illustrations. Um, and this is uh, with the wall text here. Um, the title um, was something that Kara Walker and I had written back and forth about. She didn't like any of the titles I suggested, um, which is fair. And so she suggested back of hand. I wrote to her and I said, well, why back of hand? She never wrote me back. Um, <laughs> so I had to kind of think through it. And I was thinking about this. You know, this is her first solo show in Georgia. She would never had a solo. I mean, in her whole career, the High Museum didn't give her a solo show. She never had a solo show in Georgia. The first one was in 2023. Was that last year? Yeah, that's wild. And so thinking about this idea of the hand, both as like a piece of paper, but also like something very familiar, maybe Atlanta, maybe Georgia, and then also something that might hurt you, that, that, that it's both familiar and painful at the same time. Um, and so this is uh, images of that installation. So this is from her Book of Hours series, which is a much, much bigger um, series than this. These are so, small drawings that um, are inspired by the medieval Book of Hours, which is a, an illuminated manuscript. But on the right here, I just wanted you to see this little zine. It's such a beautiful zine, and I think it makes a lot of sense with the book that you'll see from 2015 um, that's out, um, which deals a lot with Atlanta. Um, the book, the zine was made in relationship to an exhibition she had in Germany called Go to Hell or Atlanta, Whichever Comes First, <laughs> which is a great title and you'll see it's hard to see but you'll also see it depicted in the book um, that's out in the vitrines uh, that's Stone Mountain which is um, it's like Mount Rushmore but Confederate um, people um, and it's interesting because when you live in Georgia everybody goes there like everyone I know as kids were like oh yeah we went there for a school trip 
and this was a, this was a sort of monument that um, Kara Walker um, grew up under. And this is this brilliant little zine that has all of these different drawings that she did. She went to Stone Mountain and did a, a lot of drawings. But you'll also see that same kind of research and thinking in the book out, um, out um, there. So here you can see this large um, piece right here, which you also saw outside and that you can read. And I'd love to get anyone's, um, I also talked to or asked Kara Walker about this and she didn't give me any definitive answer <laughs> about, which is fine. I think that's totally okay. I don't think, I don't believe that artists are supposed to explain these things like as the historian or the critic, maybe I should figure this out. But I'd like you to, if you see any kind of um, silhouette or any kind of figure in that, I'd be interested to know. I keep seeing um, Washington crossing the Delaware. Um, but when I was teaching and had students, people had all kinds of different ideas about that. Future is another work that another poet wrote on. You can see back of hand there. These two pieces, I think, were um, really beautiful, not only just because of the color. The one on the right is called Brambles, and you could imagine that they're brambles, but it was really like the closest I've ever seen to an abstract um, watercolor by Kara Walker. So I thought that was really beautiful. And these are two big, beautiful pieces that are of a much larger series. And when I installed the show, I thought, mm, maybe I should have done the whole show as a series. But I had to pay for the framing, and it's really expensive. <laughs> so <laughs> my, budget, my budget would not allow <laughs> for um, more framing. Um, one of the things that was really a wonderful takeaway, and I hope that happens here within the Poetry Foundation community, is what it means now also to not just be in New York um, under those conditions of viewership, but what does it mean to be within my own community and under those conditions of viewership. So getting to be with students, getting to be with faculty, getting to be with Athens area people, to, be, to bring this show, which I think was a show worthy of any city in the United States, but to be able to bring it to Athens, Georgia, was really, really powerful for me. And then there's, there's me. Um, just the turnout also was really exciting. We were also able to do um, a symposium. Um, I partnered with the Performance Studies Department and invited some scholars to come and talk about Kara Walker and performance. Um, and that really came out of a book that was in um, our special collections library. There was this beautiful um, Porgy and Bess codex that she had illustrated. And my art librarian was like, why don't we put that in the show? And I thought, well, it's just going to be under a vitrine that seems not that exciting. So we decided to do a symposium around that book. And then during the in between the talks, um, you could come and look at the book and it was out. And I wanted to end on this image of Gerald Ma, um, who is the editor of the Georgia Review. And the reason that this show largely came here, um, because Fred uh, was at a conference at UGA and he came with Gerald to see the show. And I just wanted to end on that part because as much as there's difficulty within this work, the conversation is so important, but also the connections and the community, um, the sort of kismet nature maybe of our collaboration, um, I think is really powerful. Um, so through all of this, I hope that we can remember um, that in this moment, there's also power for some kind of murky, difficult future. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>